Hello everybody and welcome back to the Pokemon Let's Go Let's Play! Last time we defeated Lieutenant Surge and got our third gym badge and now we're going to make our way into Diglett Cave. Now, funny story! <laughs> Just as we were about to set up recording, I came to a horrible realisation that I forgot to save last time. So we just had to do the surge battle all over again, and somehow it went easier than the first time. Yeah, that Magnemite gave us no trouble by the end of it. <laughs> Still lost fruit in the uh, shield though. Yeah, and uh, shield didn't get their come from behind victory this time, but it's been recorded for posterity. It's canon now, so... That was the non-canon bit. Um, I'd actually also like to put some clarification I talked about in the last episode. And it's about possums and opossums. I was actually wrong. Oh? So, I was watching QI, you see. <laughs> ah, of course. And it, as if they heard me, they, br they brought up what was the difference between possums and opossums. Like a fool, I thought they were the same thing. But no, opossums are in Australia and possums are in America. Otherwise, they are they near enough sound the same, but they are different animals. And now you know. And now you know. It's as if QI would... No, James, you goddamn idiot. <laughs> Here's what they actually are. And as we all know, QI is always correct. Exactly. <laughs> this is why I'm not a biologist expert. Right, and I believe this is our first Diglett. No? Huh? So you know what that means. Diggly dee, diggly dee, drio, drio, drio. <laughs> yeah, had to be done. Uh... Let that little earworm stay in your mind for a while. Let's see here. Alright, dig. Equipment. Tool. Drill. Drill the Diglett in. No, that's a cool name. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to get cool names. You're supposed to get really crap names. <laughs> <laughs> that make no sense. Exactly, okay. Uh, what's Diglett got? Uh, yeah, having a Diglett on the team would be really cool, but I think we'll stick with what we've got for now. Doesn't even have Dig, it's a shit dr Diglett. I mean, we could teach it. By the way, I have now since uh, taught through Dig, which uh, helps make the redo of Surge's Gym much easier, in all honesty. Now to catch every single Diglett. <laughs> Hopefully it's not just Diglett in here. I, I know it's called Diglett Tunnel, but I'll be kind of disappointed if we encounter nothing but Diglets. Then a massive Onyx and Duxio appear. Uh. <laughs> That's what happened when we were in, we were in Mount Moon. It's like, what's that? Oh god, it's an Onyx! That was still hilarious. <laughs> how huge it was. Part of me still wishes we got to keep Onyx on the team just so I could ride around on it. Yeah. So what's your opinion of uh, Diglett and Dugtrio? I like them. Yeah, like they're not. I don't super love them, but like I, I appreciate whenever they're there. They're useful. Yeah, Dugtrio is especially uh, a good pick for like a regular teammate. I do like um the Alolan Dugtrio. <laughs> I was about to mention yes with the uh, with the blonde hair. It's glorious locks. <laughs> L'Oreal. <laughs> I, I, like, all, all Game Freak did was just stick a blonde wig on Dugtrio, and we all went, we love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Added to the team. It was still on ground, wasn't it? Oh, finally, a better water move. Yeah, how much damage does it do? And uh, Yeah, but uh, Alolan Dugtrios are part steel, I think. Yeah, might as well give it a tackle. Yeah. At least we have Scald as well. Yeah. Thing is though... It does... Sorry, go on. I was just going to say, Melt's not going to be useful until... Like, for so long, because our next gym's a Grass Gym, so we're not going to use Melt for that either. Poor Melt. <laughs> I do remember, actually, uh, in my... Po in the run of Pokemon Yellow that I actually completed a couple of years ago, uh, I taught my Blastoise an Ice-type move, so I'll probably do the same here. That's handy. Gives you a bit of an edge if you're going into proper Grass-type. Oh, that was quick. Yeah, I remember Diglett Tunnel being much longer. I feel like it's because 
it's been so long since we've played a Gen 1 game. Like, the last one was the remakes, the um, Fire Red and Leaf Green. And even back then, it was like, God, these feel like they were take forever. I suppose they may have shortened them for this one to be a bit more casual friendly. Or maybe it's because since we, we can move much quicker now. That too. <laughs> and the fact that we can actually t choose to avoid random battles. Oh, yes. Was, didn't Dig a Cave in the original also have loads of Zubats as well? I, I'm sure like Mount Moon was the real Zubat then. Ugh. And yeah, that makes it drag. So, hey, we might as well end it there, guys. So, uh, this is Michael Bay. No, we're not gonna. <laughs> we're not gonna end it there. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, "Wow, these episodes are just getting shorter and shorter." <laughs> Ever since that one hour and twenty minutes episode. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm sure the hour-long episodes haven't ended yet. Oh no. Light up. I mean, I'm glad that we don't need to waste a move slot to use Flash, but this still seems kind of useless. Yep. I am so glad that they've kind of moved on from the, hey, let's turn on the lights in caves. It's like, on the one hand, yes, it makes sense, caves are dark, but at the same time, God, is it annoying in the game. Gen 1 especially. Yeah, I never liked Flash. It's the most useless move. Here's a bit though, what, what's worse, Flash or Defog? They're both sh equally shit. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, they share the same spot. Actually, I'll give it this. I feel Defog is in a worse position because at least Flash was like in Gen 1. Like you can make the argument, okay, it was something new and it didn't really work out and they kind of phased it out. Defog, they then brought in at a much later date. It was like, did you not learn from Flash? No one likes these types of... These types of moves and these types of problems in the game. T took them took them six generations of games until they went, wait a second, you guys don't like the HMs? No. No. <laughs> we like some of the moves. I will say, I did re I do remember seeing like a a thing a while ago where somebody pointed out that because uh, a lot of people now complain about how linear the Pokemon games have got uh, as the years have gone on and how there doesn't seem to be as many like environmental puzzles or chances for exploration and somebody pointed out that that's a result of them removing the HMs and I'm a bit like hmm that's actually a point it, the thing is though it's like okay I do understand your point the thing is though I still think removing the HMs was for the better and really what Game Freak should then do is just replace them with better puzzles yeah. Much better puzzle. What is your Eevee not learning the secret techniques? How would Eevee flash? Its eyes just light up. I mean, it is an electric type, so it just expands the energy from its body or something. Ugh. <laughs> You know, a part of me wanted to come here on my own, but we'd probably just be retrading old ground anyway. I doubt I've missed anything. Hmm. I was about to say, when do we get the bike in Gen 1? It's been so long since I played Gen 1. I don't think we get it until... Either Celadon or Saffron. It's one of those two. Hmm. Oh, yeah, because we get, we get like, um... We get, like, a token, and then we have to take it back to... Cerulean. Yeah, because the bike... The bikes actually cost like what a million poke dollars or something, which is like it's just reeks of extortionism. Just a bit. Okay, this is probably going to be the main crux of the episode. Is get, get we're going to have an episode of getting to Rock Tunnel, and then the next episode will be Rock Tunnel. <laughs> yeah. Okay, who you got? Probably just a Ratata or something. Oh no, she has an Eevee too. Oh! Well, we know what to do. We're probably going to have nothing but battles coming up for like the next, the next rest of the episode, so we're going to need to probably find something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so, what what would you like in the next in the next Pokemon? game what like a main series title yes ah uh, 
honestly hard, not really sure what I want. I suppose like my main thing is just a better story because like I've said before, Swords and Shields really left me wanting. Aside from that though, uh, really just the stuff I've said before in previous parts, like just shake up the formula a lot more, do something really different or radical. Hmm. Yeah, I feel, I feel like it's like this, they're kind of, I'd say stuck in a rut, but also kind of like, they know what works, and it's like, yeah, it works, but it kind of, it's getting a bit samey, as in it's been samey for a while. There's a risk that the games are becoming very complacent. Mm-hmm. And because there's, sorry, go on. I was going to say, because, uh, you know, the games still sell ridiculously well, so why why fix what isn't broken? And there's no competition either. Like, there's no... Like, yes, obviously there's turn-based RPGs, but there's no turn-based RPG like a Pokemon game. Apart, like, yeah, she... Oh, yeah, but Temtem's coming. It's like, yeah, but Temtem's not. It's only just come out, and it's even then it's like, no one's really talking about it. Yeah, it's, at the very least, it's not a, it's not mainstream. It's not a household name like Pokemon is. Like, I'm literally trying to think of games that would be like Pokemon, and even then, it's like... In a way... Bear with my logic here. In a way, Persona is a little bit? I mean, if you squint at it. If you squint at it and you think, okay, I'm collecting all the Personas, in a way it is. By the way, this Eevee is really starting to piss me off. <laughs> I was about to say, this Eevee's not going down! But, uh, I mean, Pokemon had a bunch of, like, uh, cop... I don't want to call them copycats, because that seems a bit demeaning, but, like, a lot of, uh... Competition. I wouldn't even call them competition, but so many people were trying to copy the Pokemon formula back in the day, you know, Dinosaur King, Monster Rancher, uh... Oh my god, Monster Rancher, yes! <laughs> Because, you know, Pokemon was at the peak of its popularity back then, so everybody wanted a piece of that pie. Nowadays, you know, aside aside from maybe Temtem, there's nothing else like Pokemon, because a lot of companies know they can't match it. And even ones that are different enough to be their own identity, but still in a similar vein, like Digimon, for example. Even then, like, I'd say that the Digimon games like aren't as... They're not at the forefront as Pokemon is. Well, it's also the fact that uh, di because of uh, Digimon isn't... Because even, like, Digimon I don't think is as big as it used to be. Oh, no. But, like, you, I will give Digimon this. When I look at the Digimon games, a lot of them have their own identities. Yes, they do. Like, I'm not going to lie, that uh, strategy RPG that they've been uh, talking about for the last couple of years, I probably won't get it, but it looks very unique and kind of cool from a conceptual standpoint. I will, because I love strategy games. I did like Digimon back in the day. It's a shame that Digimon Try didn't do so well. Have you seen... I'll tell you what, let's just move... Because, like, everyone's sick of Pokemon now. Let's talk about Digimon. Because... <laughs> well, have you... Because they've announced... They've decided to airing, like, a new anime, which is, like, a reboot of the original one. Yes, I've heard about this. Apparently, it's really good. It's only, like, a couple of episodes in. But, like, it's... And it's... From what I can tell, it's been escalating super quickly. Like, episode two, we've already got Garurumon showing up. Uh, I, I saw like a, the transformation the first time Argamon goes into Greymon, and it looks pretty damn cool. It, yeah, it was crazy, right? It's like, it's like oh my god! <laughs> I'm almost a little tempted to check it out, but then I remember when I tried rewatching the original one uh, a couple of years ago, and I'm gonna be honest, like, I don't particularly like the original anime anymore, like as an adult. <laughs> but that's only because, like, again, Digimon is made for kids. Like, let's be real here. Oh god, I still remember watching all the Digimon. I do, like, uh, I'll call it Gen 2, because that's kind of what it is. But it's oh, you mean um, Ad Adventure, Adventure, Adventure 02, 02, yeah. I li I actually liked the story they were going with that, like the the Emperor and all this lot, and then having the Emperor actually join their team and everything. It was kind of cool. It also it also helped Derek Stephen Prince was the, was the Emperor. He was glorious. Oh yeah, I look back on Digimon very fondly. And I, uh, I enjoyed uh, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Like, not enough to get the sequel, but I liked it. Kind of wish it had a dub as well, because I'm not going to lie. Some people say, oh, Digimon's dub is awful. It's like, it's enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's bad. It's, 
they had fun with it. <laughs> is the nicest way to say it. I think that's what because I listened to a bit of the uh, the dub for Try, and I think it's because Try they tried to they uh, tried. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> they maybe it's just the bits I watched, but it sounds like they were trying to be a bit more like serious with it. And it's like this is not what I remember for the for the dubs. I mean, it makes sense considering that Try was clearly aiming at an older audience. True. I remember when we talked about Try, we talked about the first few movies, and then after that, when it got to the late ones, we're like, "Oh, we give up." Yeah, and you did. You didn't even watch the last one. Like, you no, I didn't. <laughs> you gave up. I carried on, and I'm going to be honest. I was not pleased with the end result. Did I make the right decision to stop watching? Kinda, yeah. <laughs> Unless you really care about the story, I really wouldn't. I really would say, don't bother. I kind of gave up with the story after the, after the the last couple. I was like, oh, really? Like, I know I bitch about how overly simplistic Pokemon stories are, but like, at least they never get needlessly convoluted. It wasn't even enjoyable the Digimon ones. After all. I was like, oh, okay. Let's kill Leomon again. Why? Because that's what he does. Leomon gets jobbed. Oh, Nidorino. Did we ever get a male Nidoran? I can't remember if we did. I don't think so. I think we got a female. In that case, this one's viable. Yay. I love it that Nidor Nidorino was like one of the main ones. Him and Gen them and Gengar in the opening. And I don't remember anyone really using Nidorino. Well, why would you when it evolves into a much better Pokemon? But I don't even remember that many people using Nidoking either. Except for obviously Gary in his the anime debut. And uh, what was your opinions of Nido, Nido Queen and Nido King? I like him, especially uh, like Nido King especially. Like I think he's just cool. Like he's got a good design. The uh, poison grounds typing is really neat. Just the spikes and everything. Yeah, exactly. I feel like they'd be ripe for um, a new form, like in one of the later games. But... Dude, Mega Nido King, Mega Nido Nido King and Nido Queen, yes. <laughs> Nido Queen. <laughs> here's here's the thing though, like, what kind of animal are they even meant to be? Because the Nido Rans look a lot like little rabbit things, and then they turn into some sort of reptile, and then. <laughs> And then into a mon a kaiju, essentially. A mini kaiju. In fact, I'm gonna look. What is... When you think about it, the evolutionary line for the Nidorans is weird. Gen 1 had some weird, weird design choices. Oh, we got a name it as well, haven't we? Yes, we do. <laughs> um... It shares traits with rhinoceroses, gorillas, mice, rabbits, and porcupines. I don't see it. Ah, oh, like, oh yeah, we did catch a male need around ages ago. <laughs> we just never used them. Yeah, we did. Okay, like, I know this seems really stupid, but like, I don't like the idea of catching a need of, I, like, I don't like the idea of catching a Pokemon and then catching its evolution, its evolution later on. Are we going to release the Nido Nidorino? I, I I don't think there's even an option to do that, but we are gonna, just going to send it to the professor. Oh yeah, because I mean that's how we get um, berries, isn't it? Yeah, or like the candies and stuff. That too. Like getting it, getting a Nido King on the team would be really good, but like this is this is uh, my personal rule set, and I know that's really stupid, but I'm committed to it now. We are sticking to the formula that works, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the thing, I don't think I actually suffer from o OCD, but I have some sort of weird form of it, I think. I think it's like um, you have like your own set of rules and things you follow. Yeah, but like, it's to my detriment. Like, <laughs> I, no, like, I remember when I got Hyrule Warriors uh, for the first time, I beat the story mode. And then I stopped playing it for like months. And then when I went back to it, I was like, wait, which character was I meant to play as next? And I, because I forgot, I just deleted my save data and started again. I never delete my save data, but I am in a similar vein where it's like, if I haven't played a game in a while, I'll just start again. 
no matter where I am in the story. Yeah. It kind of makes sense for an RPG, for, like for most RPGs anyway. You're kind of like, where was I? It's like, oh god, I can't remember the story. Let's start again. Yeah, but it's like, if you've put in like a hundred hours into it, it's like, oh, all that progress is gone. This is why I kind of like it where some modern RPGs are actually starting to put stuff in where you can actually like kind of get caught up with the story. Like how Persona 5 adds the little bits where it's like, okay, here's stuff in the um, the help data where you can like find out what's happened in the story so far. Yeah, the recaps. And uh, Dragon Quest XI did that as well, where it's like every time you come back, it tells you pretty much the story so far, which is why it's loading, which is nice. That's very helpful. Oh. Okay, bye. <laughs> did you see? And <laughs> fruit just went, yeah, and. Yeah, and. <laughs> Not impressed. <laughs> Please tell me he's just going to keep throwing Geodudes that keep self destruct Yeah, okay, it'll work this time. Geodudes, self-destruct. And all these Geodudes are like, Master, why? <laughs> I think there's what uh, there's a comic I remember where it's like um, this trainer sends out an electrode. It's like electrode self destruct and the self -de and the electrode just had this looks at the trainer with these sad eyes <laughs> as it then blows up. Well, the thing is though is that when Pokemon use like self destruct and explodes, they're not actually blowing themselves up. Like they're just releasing all the energy. Yeah, <laughs> that just becomes an explosion. Because let's be real, like if. Because Voltorb and Electrode are Pokemon that, that their whole thing is that they explode. And if that was the case, I'm pretty sure Voltorbs and Electrodes wouldn't exist. They'd be extinct. It's kind of like the new um, the new fossil Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Oh, you mean the abominations that you can create? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what has science wrought? Funny, I do not see a sandwich with that beer. <laughs> No, because I remember, like, when I did that the first time, I got, like, the electric and ice fusion. Yeah, that's what I got. And I remember looking at it thinking, like, this doesn't look natural. And then when I looked it up, I'm like, oh, you, you're merging two different fossils together. I think it's meant to be a reference to, you know, uh, I think it's Crystal Park or Crystal Palace Park. Um, or some, one of the parks in that area. It used to be, like, the old, what we thought dinosaurs looked like. Oh, okay. So people were like, we merged certain skeletons together. Because we didn't know back in the day. And then it's like, oh, that's not how they're meant to look. So, yeah, I think that's what the reference is. It's a nice little reference, even though the Pokemon themselves look horrifying. I do find it funny how, because of like advances in archaeology and, you know, the fact it just makes the Jurassic Park movies super outdated now. Yeah... It's like, well, look, we've we've recreated T-Rexes, like, and then 15 years later, that's not what T-Rexes looks like. They're meant to be feathered. What? <laughs> and then, the thing is, though, Jurassic World kind of got around it by saying, oh, this is what how people like dinosaurs, so... One way of getting around it. Even though the rest of that movie is just really dumb. Shit, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't call Jurassic World shit, but I would call it really dumb. I've not watched the sequel, I've heard that's atrocious. I, I haven't watched the sequel, and I remember the first one, I was like, I don't know, I just had a bit of taste in my mouth, especially just the, in places, really awful CGI. Like, God, some of the CGI in that movie looked atrocious. Honestly, Jurassic World was worth it just for that ending climax. I wouldn't say worth it, but that climax was fun. Oh, I call it worth it because it's so stupid. But like the enjoyably kind of stupid. Oh yeah, enjoyably kind of stupid, but mm. I love dinosaurs too much, and that movie kind of peed me off in all the wrong places. <laughs> you know, you know it's messed up when they make a dinosaur movie that pisses off the guy who likes dinosaurs. Exactly. <laughs> Funny story. I wanted to be a paleontologist when I was growing up. Blame my school for that never happening. What did they discourage you from it or something? Like. Uh, they kind of just didn't know what it was. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? But they're the school. My school was shit. <laughs> just to put it in, to put it in proper terms. So like going to the um, careers advice when I was like 14, 15, I was, they were like, okay, what would what would you like to be? I said, oh, I want to be paleontologist or dinosaurs. Uh, we have no idea what that is. 
like literally I had no idea what it was and that's what got me into acting instead I want to travel to the universe where you became a paleontologist yeah <laughs> It'd be a very weird universe. You'd be the most theatrical paleontologist they have. <laughs> Every dinosaur skull you'd pick up. Ah, alas, Horatio, I knew. Yes, James, we get it. <laughs> you say that as a joke, but that would probably be me. Yes. <laughs> I know you too well. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, to carry on from that, like, I, a few years later when I was in college, like, um, it was a bit where it was like a day where it was like we didn't have much to do. So I was like, oh, okay, like, look up on university application and everything. And I went, you know what? I'm going to check. Because my old school said, oh, there was no courses for paleontology. I looked. There was tons. Wow. Yeah, Warren, Warren Comprehensive School. It's shit. Don't go there. Man, I hope nobody from there is watching this. <laughs> I hope they are. <laughs> I... <laughs> Believe me, I have many reasons to wish that that school goes the way of the dodo. You know what, just to bring this back around and make it relevant... Th 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 <laughs> oh wait, no. I was about to say there's never been like a dodo-style st uh, dodo Pokemon, but there is. Doduo. Although I wouldn't... Uh, to be fair, Doduo does not look like a dodo. It's really more of an ostrich, isn't it? It is. <laughs> an ostrich... It's the horrible, horrible mashup of an ostrich and emu. So yeah, we should we should probably get like maybe in a uh, Gen Nine, the net the fossil Pokemon for that should be more closer to a dodo or something. That'd be cool. Uh sorry, that just reminded me of another. Co uh, did you ever see a comic on that showed how uh, do uh, Dodrio flies? Are you talking about where it just turns into a jet or something? <laughs> no, no, it's like okay, Dodrio, use fly, and it literally it swings its heads like a propeller. Yes, I have seen that one. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it is very funny. It's like, oh my god, yes. Where are we? Why do I feel like this kid's about to mug me? Well, that's a nice Pokemon you're walking with. Be a real shame if something would have happened to it. It's Giovanni's nephew. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Wesker. <laughs> no, I'm going to edit that in now. <laughs> <laughs> Chris. Wesker! Brother! <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who don't know, there's there's a joke a joke we've wanted to put in for a while where it's like we just put in loads of the, uh, from video games, all the Chris Wesker. <laughs> Brother, liquid. Really thought we'd actually uh, we'd actually hold that off until we ever covered Metal Gear Solid, but clearly not. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, if you, I can't remember. I know you played Revengeance, but did you play any of the other MGS games? I have not played any of the Metal Gear games aside from Revengeance. I have watched uh, Let's Plays of them, therefore I am an expert. Oh yes, indeed. Oh, this poor pharaoh is going to have the time of its life. <laughs> like, Firo looks intimidating, but I don't know why you'd ever use it as, like, a permanent fixture. Especially with other flying types in the game. I'm sure we discussed this, uh, like, episodes ago, but, like, I'm shocked Firo never got a third evolution. Yeah, actually. Something a bit more intimidating looking, maybe. Or maybe that would be like, um, you know how some like uh, new form Pokemon get a new evolution? Like a uh, Zigzagoon in um, Sword and Shield. Oh yeah. Maybe they'll do that and then like another game add Spear of Fear and give it a new one. You know what? They should. They should. They should do that with Psyduck as well because that was meant to have a f another evolution in the Yeah, I, I remember we discussed this once. Mm -hmm. So, in the future... Thing is, though, like, so many of the Pokemon that we say, like, I oh, should get new forms of evolutions are all from Gen 1. Yeah, that's true, actually. But at, at the same time, it, like, I think we'd all be... Like, imagine if we all, like, picked up a uh, Sword and Shield and, like, I don't know, a uh, friggin' Rowlet's got, like, a new evolution. We'd be like, I mean, that's kind of cool, but why? It just... <laughs> we just came out. <laughs> I'm trying to think what, what one's from Gen 2. Maybe Sentret? 
Maybe like an alternate form. I don't know if Sentry needs another evolution. I'm surprised they haven't done more with Marrow. Yeah, because Marrow was like one of the big, uh, I guess you could call it icons for Gen 2. Yeah. Because it was one of the first Pokemon that they revealed for it. It's where many people thought, oh my god, it's Pika Blue. It's like, no, it's not Pika Blue. <laughs> it's a shame we never get, like, urban legends like that anymore. Because information it, information is so much more easily accessible and, like, f uh, false rumours can be easily debunked now. So, like I, like, I mean, yeah, I was into Pokemon during that time period, but I was never so into it that I was part of that whole, like, guys, p there's a blue Pikachu. <gasps> I think it's also because we were very, very young at that point as well, so we're just like, what's this? I mean, I do remember watching uh, the, f the first movie with the Pikachu's vacation shorts in cinemas and being like, the fuck's a snubble? <laughs> I fuck yeah, because the big thing was everyone was like, remembers Don Fan from, especially me, because Don Fan's one of my favourites, but then it's like, oh yeah, Snubble's in that movie as well. What did you forget? Ages ago, yes. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, Snubble's here. I love... Speaking of Snubble, I love how they use Snubble in Detective Pikachu. Oh, in the movie, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's... It's it's just like... And it's like... Oh, okay, you can you can scratch me now. Yeah, it's like the kind of thing where like you go to pet it and it's just like... But then you actually like scratch it. It's like, hmm, yes, yes. <laughs> it's happy after that. You get to live today. <laughs> Because I imagine Snubble's actually quite terrifying if it got. <laughs> it looks like a, for those who don't know what a Snubble is, it looks like a it looks like a bulldog in a dress. Bit hard to be intimidated when it's bright pink. Yeah, I don't know. With its you think it's oh it's not that intimidating, and then it growls at you like okay maybe yes it is. <laughs> yeah, Granbull's a lot more intimidating. Oh yeah, <laughs> like I would not fuck with a Granbull. I was like, what, 40% Jaws? <laughs> it's huge. Girl, I didn't say anything. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, I just walked past. Oh my god. <laughs> what an entrance. Yeah. This is a terrible first impression. How dare you patronize me? I did not say a word! <laughs> Alright, time to beat up your fish. Oh, by the way, your fish is shit. You, you say that as it slowly kills me. Oh my <laughs> god, James! <laughs> Damn you, hindsight! Damn you, hindsight! <laughs> I still don't understand why Goldeen's the shitty Pokemon you can get in Smash and not Magikarp. That's true. Is, Ga is Gyarados in Smash? Come on, I'm uh, no, I don't think it's ever been, like, appeared as, like, a Pokeball item. Huh. They should do that for, like, Smash 6 or something. Have, like, Magikarp pop out of a Pokeball. It splashes about pretty uselessly, but then it has, like, maybe a 25% chance of just immediately evolving into a Gyarados. And, like, smashing the screen or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, time for the OP move. I mean, at this point, Cadbury's has two OP moves. Cadbury's is OP. Although I do love it when you when you play Silver and you get to Mount Silver and you're fighting Red. And it's like, you get to Pikachu and it's like, oh, thank God, it's the easy one of the team. Because <laughs> it's back in the day where it's like, oh, yeah, Pikachu's on their own are not that good. <laughs> I don't know, because I know I know Red is a secret boss fight in this game, and I don't know if we're going to fight him or not. I think I need, I need to look up what conditions you need to meet before you can fight him. We'll have to go through a Mount Silver type thing. Yeah, at the very least, if I haven't already made it clear... Obviously, we're going to beat the league, but aside from that, the only other thing I want to do is catch Mewtwo. Yeah. I feel like Mewtwo is usually, like, the big ending cutoff point. Yeah, which is ironic because he's honestly, like, as long as you've got the Master Ball with you, he's not that difficult. No. <laughs> is that a thing to think about? Are we going to do it without the Master Ball or with it? I mean, we have no choice. Like, <laughs> <laughs> 
Because it's not a fight. I mean, I suppose we could try to catch him in regular Pokeballs or something as like a joke, but... But I'm not Chucker Conroy. I don't have the patience for that bullshit. <laughs> oh yeah, you don't watch Chucker Conroy, do you, James? No, I, I know of Chucker Conroy, though. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I'd recommend watching his Pokemon playthroughs. They're good stuff. But like, he all, whenever it comes to legendary Pokemon, he always tries to catch him in ridiculous ways. He once caught Groudon in a nest ball. <laughs> it took him hours, but he did it. <laughs> Beating it step by step by horrible step. Okay, time to get another Nidorino. <laughs> that I'll never use. Yep. Sending straight to the professor. Oh, it's bouncing. It's happy. Well, now we know where the rabbit genes go to. <laughs> I mean, I can see it in the ears. I can't see anything else. It really is more rhino than rabbit. Yeah. It's a Ryan Abbott. Do you reckon they'll ever do, like, Pokemon fusions? Hmm. Maybe in a side game? Yeah, that'd probably be the best place for it. I Yeah, I feel like in a side game. I feel like the most we'll ever get from, like, the main story games is, like, Sword and Shield with the uh, the fossils. Yeah, or, like, a uh, QRM from uh, Black 2 and White 2. Oh, yeah. Briefly forgot about that. That's I think that's the closest, definite closest we're going to get. I feel like, I feel like it's gonna be one of those that goes a bit too much. It's like, hmm. I think people are so used to how the Pokemon look to actually have Pokemon that merge. Although saying that, there was an episode of the anime. Do you remember the Ghastly episodes? Uh oh, the, the first one where like Brock Brock falls in love with a ghost. Yes, and in that episode, there's a bit where um Ash sends out uh, Bulbasaur and Squirtle. To fight Ghastly, and it's it summons up an apparition of both Venusaur and Blastoise, and then they fusion dance together to make Venus toys. It's like, oh crap! Yeah, I mean that was cool. It was cool, but terrifying in the t like, as a child. Like, Ugh. In fact, actually, James, I don't know if you knew this, but in like the um, Pokemon manga, or the, oh, I can't remember which one it was. There's like five different Pokemon mangas. I was about to say there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's Pokemon Special. It's called. Um, in an episode of that, oh hey, there's a Pharaoh. Yeah, let's catch it. Why not? Um, it. But yeah, in the one of the Pokemon mangas, uh, Team Rocket fused Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres together. Oh. Okay. I don't. I. I think it's Pokemon Special. I'd always. I always wanted to read it because I remember reading like a uh, chapter synopsis on Cerebi, and it just sounded awesome. Was that the one that also like goes really crazy with like how like for example Pinsir cleaves Magma in two, or is that different? I don't remember that. I know the Charmeleon cutting Arbok in half. That's the infamous one. I don't. Rec I don't recall hearing about a Pinsir bisecting a Magma. Yeah, that's the other one I've heard. Like, Jesus. <laughs> it might be, because that's also the one where, like, uh, Lieutenant Surge, Koga, and Sabrina are all members of Team Rocket. Yes. Which is a shock. It's like, oh, there's more gym leaders involved in that team. I actually really like that concept. I think, wouldn't that be cool? Like, even if they're, if they're going to keep doing, like, the gym formula, they should really go crazy with it once in a while and have like have like some several of the gym leaders be secret team rocket agents or like whatever the villain of the week is i'd, I'd be all right with that speaking of team rocket oh wow we are, <laughs> we are so gonna get mugged <laughs> all the other criminal organizations make fun of us maxi from team magma won't stop making facebook memes about it Team Flare is making fun of us. Team Flare! Oh, what's this? Ooh. I think I know who this is because I've seen uh, bits of it. Oh, is it? Yes, it's her. It's Lorelei from the Elite Four. I mean, all Lapras has to do is literally turn its head and hurl an ice beam at them. Even that Lapras has a, has a look on its face that's like, really? You guys are serious? <laughs> it's like in the um, the uh, Pokemon Origins anime when Ash uh, when Red's going to find Mewtwo and he's riding Lapras, and Mewtwo gives out this like screech, and Lapras just looks at Mewtwo like, "Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> shut up." 
I think we're so used to um, Ash's Lapras from the anime because it was because so, it was a baby, so we're so used to it being a little bit more meek and like not really meant for battle. Though Ash did use it in battle a few times. It was super capable. It's because Lapras is great. Again, a shame he released it, but you know what? At least there was like a proper reason why he released Lapras because it was a baby and it was separated from its family. Yeah, I'll give it that one. That's the one that's like okay, fair play. It's all the other ones. It's like, hmm. <laughs> okay, shields are leveled up as well. And that fight's over. <laughs> oh. Came at me with a single raticate. Why couldn't it have just been like a team battle? Why couldn't me and Lorelei have worked together? Because this is Gen 1. Oh, fine. <laughs> Oh god, we're useless! Remember players, she uses Ice-type Pokémon. That'll be important for later. <laughs> Hope you're leveling up Trogdor! Remember when Lorelei appeared in the anime? Except she wasn't called Lorelei, she was called Prima. Oh yeah! I barely remember the episode, but I do remember that they ch changed the name for some reason. I think it was just so it could match, like, the uh, lip flaps. Ah, fair. At least that's what uh, Swade said in his uh, Pokemon recaps. In fact, funny enough, I may as well bring it up. Uh, another reason why that episode kind of sticks out in my memory is because in that episode, man, the camera really likes to focus on Lorelei's assets, if you will. <laughs> I have no idea what you mean. Oh, dear. Typical Pokemon anime in places, yeah. I remember the episode of, um, who was the, uh, uh, the rock type? Oh, Bruno. Bruno, yeah. Well, that's the thing, though. He's not a rock type user. He's a fighting type user. But he uses a bunch of rock types anyway, because there were barely any fighting types in Gen 1. It's about to say, yeah, pretty much. It's like he got Marchop's line, Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. Uh, Mankey and Primeape. I want to say that's it. Yeah. You know what? To Google, give me a moment. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, I think that that was it. <laughs> so all the other ones are. And even then, I, I don't think there's that many fighting types. Like, compared to all the others. Yeah, as of Generation 8, there are only 63 fighting types. That still seems quite a bit. 7.1 of all Pokemon. Making it the 6th rarest type, with tying with Dark. Oh, what's the rarest type? Uh, it's gotta be Dragon, surely. Maybe. Or it might be... F no, it actually wouldn't be Fairy, because Fairy got like, loads of new ones as well. Yeah, a bunch of Pokemon got retconned into being Fairy types, so... <laughs> Apparently it's Ghost. Oh, you know what? I can believe that. Yeah, there are 54 ghost type Pokemon, making it the second rarest of, of all types, only above ice. Oh, no, no, it is. No, it's ice that's the rarest. I don't know why that. Ice is the rarest? Yeah. Yeah, ghost is 54, um, ice is 49. That's weird. Like, pure ice types, there's only a few of them, and all the rest are like half types. And even then, there's not that many. So yeah, you heard it here, folks. Ice is the rarest type in the game. Now I'm just imagining Lorelei, like, choosing to become like an ice elite four member, and then super struggling to find the right boat. Like, God damn it! why are there so few of them? You know what's even worse? There are no pure ice type Pokemons in Gen 1. That's true, yeah. Most of them are part water. 
That's that's why it'd be a really bad idea trying to take on Lorelei with Charizard. Yeah. So all she has to do is send out like a friggin' dugong. <gasps> oh, fruits evolving. There was a point to this episode. Yay, we have a Gravelar. The very awkward middle stage before the really cool one later. Hey. <laughs> I know, I'm not trying to diss Graveler or anything, but like, really, in terms of design, like, it, it's still very basic. True. I love that description, by the way. Obstacles are to be rolled over, not avoided. <laughs> oh, did, did, oh my god. I love it, he's rolling. I need to see this more. Give me a sec. <laughs> they see me rolling. They hate him. <laughs> oh, and he's, he's happy too. Aw, good old fruit. I'll tell you what, let's uh, see what this lady up here is all about, and I think we'll call it an episode. I think she might be the healer. I actually think she's one of these, like... She's, she's like one of these expert trainers or something here. Oh, maybe. Because I remember she said, like, we, we fought one of those in the previous episode, I remember. That's true. I'm going to beat the crap out of you. I like her jacket. I want that in the game. I don't think, I don't think we've ever encountered the Poliwell yet. No. Yeah. I think... If I remember correctly, polywags and all that like, you could only really get in the um, from fishing. Hmm, yeah. And we don't have a fishing rod yet, do we? No. Maybe later. Oh, oh my oh, god. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> oh, Shield, why do I keep doing this to you? That's not even Shield's fault. That was just... That was just poor, poor... Poor choices. I mean, Polyworld knowing some fighting type moves already is a smart idea. Oh, yeah. If, especially since, if I remember correctly, Polly Wrath is part fighting. I believe it is. Yes, it is. Water and fighting. Which do you prefer, Polyrath or Politoad? I don't think I ever used a Politoad. I think I always stuck with Polyrath. Hmm. I mean, I, I never used either myself, but like, just in terms of design, which do you prefer? I think I prefer Polyrath, honestly. Uh, I've got a soft spot, soft spot for Politoad. I don't know. I think it just looks cute. It is cute. I think I just prefer. I just overall, I think I preferred Polyrath. Oh, there's a primate. Someday, Shield. Someday you'll get there. Someday. And then you will be unstoppable. Do you remember when Ash had a poly... A polyrath, a primate for a while? I do. I say a while, two episodes. I know. Wow, you have a really strong Pokemon, Ash. This could be really useful. Or just get rid of it. I, re I really am starting to see S.H.I.E.L.D. as the Vegeta of our team, and like, uh, when it becomes a Primeape, that's going to be the equivalent of a Vegeta going super... Yeah, uh, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. off-screen is just on the ground. <laughs> I WANNA BE A Primeape! I WANNA! I WANNA! I WANNA! I WANNA! <laughs> well, S.H.I.E.L.D., how did you do it? Push-ups, set-ups, and plenty of juice. You know what? Give Primeape an optional third evolution, but make it turn green and have it be a Broly reference. <laughs> it is that he is the legendary Primeape. Oh, that is so cool! Except he'd actually be cool as opposed to original OG Broly. Oh, snap. I liked original Broly, and it's like watching those movies again. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> I still stick with Bio Broly being worse, though. I don't think anyone's gonna like debate you on that. <laughs> like, yeah, second movie has its problems, but I still stick with Bio Broly being just overall worse. I think maybe because Bio Broly just had missed opportunities. Like, originally it was meant to be Margin Boo fighting Broly. 
which would have been so cool. And then it's like, and then it's like okay, we're going to have 18. I was like, okay, I like 18. That's fine. Oh, she doesn't do anything. Boo. Like she just, she fights for a second and gets beaten, and then Krillin arrives and he gets beaten too. It's like, oh. Okay, I guess they do nothing. Okay, that brick break could be very useful, but I'm going to teach that off screen because I really do think we better call it here for a part because uh, Rock Tunnel's coming up next. So. And that should be longer. Yeah, not a lot happened this episode. Apologies for that, everybody. But, you know, we've, we're still making progress. We've met Lorelei, and next time we shall progress through Rock Tunnel. And I think Lavender Town is next, and that'll be a hoot. Oh, yes. Uh, this is Michael Beckwith saying goodbye. This is James Hall saying goodbye. And we'll see you for another episode. Goodbye. Bye.